The first, first thing we'll have the clerk, clerk take the roll call. Gail Ames? Here. Kelly Carroll? Here. Carol Jorgensen? Here. Barry Wagner? Jason Alders? Here. Jason Alders? Here. Robert Schiller? Jeff Pilon? Here. Liz Stockman? Here. The next next thing we'll have the uh, clerk read the policy, meeting policy. Please register your attendance on the sign-in sheet on the back table. Copies of the agenda are also available on the back table. The agenda as printed or amended will be followed, so all necessary and needed actions by the Planning and Zoning Commission will be addressed. The agenda may be amended by proper motion. Comments from the floor are welcome during public hearings. Those wishing to comment must register on the floor comment sheet on the back table. When comments from the floor are made, individuals must first be recognized by the chairman, second, clearly state your name and address for the record, third, allow no more, more than three minutes to state your comments or concerns. Please turn off all cell phones or make sure they're on silent. Thank you. Okay, the next next thing we'll do is uh, approve or amend tonight's meeting minutes agenda of July 28th, 2020. Do we have a motion for this? Commissioner Perro made the motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Commission, Commissioner uh, Alder seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. The next thing we're going to do is approve the planning and zoning minutes of June 23rd, 2020. Do we have a motion for that? I'll make the motion to approve. Commissioner Alders made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, Commissioner Jorgensen seconded. Okay, well, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now we'll open the first public hearing. The first public hearing has to do with it. Uh, continuous from Ju June 23rd, 2020 meeting of subdivision by Lestico Estate at 21413 Northern Boulevard to subdivide three existing lots and the four partials farmlands from the, oh, partial for the purpose of distributing land among family members and sep separating the farmland from the balance of the land. This uh, topic will be continued August 25th, 2020 meeting. So I make a motion that we continue this meeting until the August meeting. I'll we second have, that. Okay, Commissioner Pearl, second it. Mr. Chair? Yes. Please just care, clarify that you're continuing the public hearing to the yes. next meeting. Okay. Okay. Cut. Okay, what we'll do is uh, we'll open the next public hearing, and there's a conditional use for, permit for car tree ser service located at 8301 101st Avenue Northwest, pin 32-33-25-43-0001 on a 10-acre partial split from the Greenwald property. The request is for location of a utility company within the RRA, the Royal Di uh, Residential Agriculture District, as allowed per section 11-3-5.C.4 of the now then zoning ordinance. And we're, at this time, we're going to uh, uh, is anybody here representing them? Anything you'd like to say about it? Yeah. Come up to the mic and give your name. Um, thank you for your time. First of all, appreciate it. Um, my name is Evan Robinson. I work for Carl's Tree Service. We are owned by FedEx, which is a group of utilities. Nexus Energy being one of them, which is the neighbors over here in Ramsey. Um, what we're looking to do is basically create a, a satellite division. And in doing that, um, essentially we don't really want to change the landscape a whole lot in there. Right now it's it's, uh, it's farmland. And I believe that there's maybe you've got some, some, some concerns about uh, pesticides or herbicides or something to that nature, which um, I'd like to just clarify that we don't use pesticides and herbicides on site for any reason. Uh, we do, do utilize 
utilize some herbicides uh, for our right away clearing programs, but there would be no pesticides or herbicides being used on the site unless requested by the city council because of the invasive species, uh, such as, you know, if, if you get some uh, clover, um, Canadian thistle, things like that, it's a nuisance issue. Anyway, um, currently there's corn being there, so I believe that most corn is being sprayed by pesticides, so there will be less of an impact for groundwater or anything like that, having the site done uh, that we would, we would want to be using it for. Um, there was a concern about some traffic, I believe. Uh, we currently have six locations, and one of them is on the state highway, where we do have crews consistently going in and out. We've never had an accident on that. It's Highway 78 up in Ottertail, Minnesota. Uh, with the way that we are proposing to use this property, it, like I said, it's for a satellite location only, which would be parking some vehicles there. Um, coming in and out irregularly, uh, typically, a crew would leave the work site at about 7.30 in the morning. We go out and do our job clearing vegetation from the utility the power lines, uh, ensuring safe, reliable electricity for all of the residents of Calvin, as well as uh, the rest of the state of Minnesota. Um, and so, so really limited in and out, it wouldn't be a, like a, a, a UPS trucks in and out or anything like that. And, not a lot of people coming in because we're selling a product or anything like that. It's essentially just a spot to park some vehicles. And if anybody here lives now, then, which I'm guessing most of you guys do, you've probably seen us around. We've probably been in the yards and we've probably cleared trees uh, to ensure that safe, reliable electricity. Um, property value, I, I can't really speak to that. All I can say is that in Alexandria, in the report, there's pictures of another site that we have, which is essentially very close to, if not exactly the same as what we want to do at this site. Uh, as you can maybe see here. Um, this is off of State Highway 29, and then we can move ahead and show okay. a couple other photos of those. Sure. So that's a 12 by 23 shed there. Essentially, what we want to be using this for is um, to do interviews with people, store some paperwork, and again, just be able to do interviews at the location for prospective employees um, rather than having to go to a Burger King or something to that extent, which you know, is currently, unfortunately, what we're having to do at this point. So, um, again, traffic in and out with, with hiring is, is very limited. Um, but this is what the site would propose to be look like. It's a, a small parking lot with an area for storage of uh, brush branches, lofts, as you can see on the left hand side of the photos there, that's the brush lot files. Um, we do have a neighbor at this site that is through uh, about a, a 50 yard willow swamp wetland woods and we've not had any complaints or issues uh, for the three years that we've been at this site. So no complaints, zero complaints, and uh, property values were not an issue as far as I, as far as I know. Um, as I said, we're, we're owned by FedEx, which is a uh, group of nine power line companies, with Connexus being one of them. And 90% of our business is vegetation management for power lines, uh, meaning that we're an essential business because without us, your power will be going out a lot more often. Uh, trees are the number one cause of outages for electricity, and so without vegetation management, trees would be causing a lot more outages. We are one of three companies in the state of Minnesota that's accredited by the Tree Care Industry Association as a utility vegetation management company. We've got multiple ISA utility certified arborists on staff as well. And I guess lastly, I just I wanted to discuss a little bit about the option for the city. And if you guys feel like, I used to live in Ramsey, and, and we had to go dump over our team efforts. It was like a 45 minute drive there. And I thought the prices were a little bit outrageous over there. And so, for the city of Ramsey Streets Department, I think you guys have 60 miles of road that you maintain. And so, to be able to have, if you have trees come down, oak trees with oak wood that you're, are hazards, and you guys are having to get those removed. I don't know where you currently store your debris, but that would be something that I 
I'd be more than happy to maintain your guys' tree debris as well as the city and even open it up at specific times, being that I would like to be gated to the residents of Mount Island so they'd be able to dispose of their tree debris at a minimal charge for the city residents. But the city, again, you know, I, I, that would just be part of I think it'd just be a great thing to do for you guys if you don't have a spot to go. We currently manage the city of Anoka's pile. Um, and uh, what we do is we bring a tub grinder in. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with tub grinders, but they're machines that are about the size of this room. And we just dump the brush and the logs in this tub grinder, and it spits out wood chips. It happens about twice a year, and it takes about a day each time that we do it. Um, my, propose, my proposal to you would be that once or twice a year, as the piles got too large, we would have the tub grinder come in, grind that pile down. 95% of that wood waste goes to the city of St. Paul, where they burn it for fuel. The other 5% is used for the city of St. Paul for when they um, plant, plant new trees. And again, we have other wood chips from our vegetation management that if the city of Melbourne would want that or city residents would want to come and get wood chips for free, that would be something that I think would be another additional benefit to the city. Um, I guess that's kind of the main points that I want to get on. Is there any direct questions for you guys that you may have while I'm up here? We might address your later on, later on questions. Okay, very good. Uh, Mr. Chairman, have you had any contact with the county yet about access off of that road? Access off of the road? I believe yes. that there is a uh, county we access permit to put in That's a, for a residential driveway, though, isn't that correct? It was, um, it was made just the access point. They didn't know, I guess, at the time. But again, I'm, I'm sure they assumed it was residential, yes. Right. But we you just have, you haven't had any contact with the county yet? Nothing further than what we had as far as the, uh, the, the original approved site plan. Okay. So, yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay, at this time we're, we're going to ask our planner to give the results of her investigation and recommendations. Yeah. Not, not quite. Not quite. This just shows the 40 acre piece that the Greenwalds subdivided and the, the 10 acre portion of that, which is. This, yes. Uh, Mr. Chair. Dale. Yes. Can I just say something here? It's yes, unusual for us to have a crowd, so maybe we could give a little background so people can relax and listen better. That's all right. Okay, go ahead, Mayor. So, okay. again, this is a public hearing. So you'll have an opportunity to speak tonight. So the representative from CARS had a first to give some background. Our planner, Ms. Stockman, will be giving a report with the documents that are in front of us. Uh, is there a copy at the back, Helen? In the book, there's just one copy. So there's one book uh, back there if you want to see what we're reading here. But she will be putting things up on the screen so you can follow along. You will then have the opportunity to come up, give your name, uh, and present your statement uh, regarding this. So we just want to have two public hearings tonight. This first one is on the request for cars, and then we'll have a second one on an interim use permit for home business. So again, the first one is for cars over on 181st. And uh, if you have any questions, again, we'll have a, a period of time after Ms. Stockman speaks for you to come up and say your piece as well. Any questions before we begin? All right, so I'm sorry, Liz, I just wanted to... Oh, that's okay. It's been a while since we've had a big public hearing, so. Yeah, it has. We like to have the guests, though. <laughs> um, so the request involves a conditional use permit, and what that means is that certain uses, while normally not suitable in a particular zoning district due to their nuisance characteristics or their incompatibility with permitted uses, may be suitable under special circumstances and the conditional use permit process allows um, cars tree to come in here and ask for permission. The planning and zoning and 
city council has the opportunity to establish conditions for the way that this could operate on that site. So that would mean anything from hours of operation, how big those piles get, how long those piles sit there, how many vehicles can be parked on the site, you know, anything related to that site use and the impacts that this site has on the adjoining property, um, the location that it sits, and the characteristics of the use itself. So in other words, some of the, the noise would be one example, you know, how many times is this chipper going to run and how long per day can this run? So those kinds of things are everything that we looked at and that the ordinance requires us to look at. So again, this 40-acre parcel abuts 181st on the western portion. There's a 10-acre parcel. Uh, only about six acres is usable on the southern part here. Um, kind of the western edge and the whole northern part is wetland. There is an existing farmhouse um, that the Greenwalds own and are renting at this time, adjacent. And there is a, the other closest property is a home across 181st on the south side. So this is the site plan in the green here, showing how they would have one access point onto 181st. And I don't know if any of you drove by and saw, I, I put two orange cones out there indicating where this lot started and stopped because it was kind of hard to see what portion of this 40 acres, um, you know, was going to have or proposed to have this tree service. So I did mark those two property lines. Uh, it has, is proposing one access onto 181st and we would need county approval for that. Uh, there's also a small wetland in this ditch area here uh, that requires special approval and that application has been made with the uh, through the city's local governing unit the wetland specialist and uh, army corps has to approve that so we're in the process of doing that um, this the white is showing a gravel area the building being here set back 150 feet off of the road and then these are the little driveways that Mr. Amundsen was talking about. On either side would be the logs or the brush piles. So the trucks would back up into here and unload. And then periodically they would, you know, haul out or chip or do whatever they need to do to reduce the quantity there. Uh, this graphic shows the 10 acre parcel and the distances to all the adjoining homes. Um, so like I said, the existing farmhouse to the east is 315 feet. Uh, across to the south, this house is 500 feet away, and all the others are in excess of 1,000 uh, in this radius around the proposed use. This map shows the National Wetland Inventory, just a graphic. Um, showing this large wetland on the northern part of the property and then also in the surrounding area. As you know, Anoka County does have a lot of wetlands, as is evidenced here. These pictures are what I took on July 21st at the site. The driveway would be coming in about where these trees are separated, um, where this opening is. And the, of course, the highest part of the site is the corn field that you see. So that's the portion where the proposed development would be. This shows the driveway on the south side of 181st into that residence that's about 500 feet away. Um, again, here's a view of the corn field kind of the highest and driest part of the site. Um, it still is a fairly low property. Uh, in fact, we had, when the uh, property was first marketed, we had multiple calls for um, inquiring about constructing a home there. And the uh, subdivision was approved with a slab on grade only at a 
elevation of 918.0. And some of the people that I talked to didn't like the fact that they would have to haul and fill in order to have a lookout or a walkout on the site. And um, also, I did have quite a few inquiries about possible home businesses on the property. Um, because as you may know, anything over five acres in now then is open to possible home business through approval of an interim use permit, a process that is similar to this, but interim use permits go away when the property is sold, uh, whereas conditional use permits run with the land and the city has to go through uh, public hearing efforts to remove the CUP if at some point they're not used any longer. So, this is an option for the property uh, through the CUP process. Again, this shows the opening near where this driveway would come out. And this is a view with the um, subdivision way to the north in Wild Run Estates. I was standing on the edge of the road in that photo. So Evan, Mr. Evanson, has gone through these pictures. That's the same size building as proposed here. Um, in his letter, uh, planning and zoning, he did talk about an exception to the uh, building material requirement. We do allow wood, painted wood, in our RRA district. Um, so as long as you as a Commission were accepting of this possible, um, you know, or this construction type that would be permitted. Uh, the biggest thing here is your job is to consider consider this as an essential use. Uh, if you determine that it is based on their activities and the use of the site then your second job is to ensure that it meets all the conditional use permit criteria outlined in your report. Um, and then after that, we look at the very specifics of the use itself and how we would want to limit or protect ourselves into the long term. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to ask the clerk at this time if the legal publications and mailings and postings have been completed. Okay, <laughs> now we'll, we're going to hear, uh, open up the pub, public comments, but first of all, I think we have a couple letters to be read. Would you like to read this, sir? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Evanson, Mr. Evanson, Mr. The first one we received was from Brandon Ebert of 9157 Burns Parkway. Talking points that a dump site would, would or could negatively affect the neighborhood. Nuisance. Now then, City Code Chapter 3-1-3 and 3-1-4 define and describe nuisances, which are violations described in 3-1-5, such as refuse plants and tree trimmings, wood and vegetative storage, unwanted vegetation such as weeds, conditions conducive to vermin harboring, fire, and fire hazards. Second point, RRA prohibited. Now then, City Code Chapter 11-3-5 defines that this will not be agriculture nor residential home occupation. It is not any of the following agriculture, horticulture, forestry, and a dump for refuse or recycling refuse is not a salmon. Now then, City Code 11-4-16 prohibits what car tree service has proposed from product, storage, tools, equipment, and vehicles. The third point, not a utility. Cars is a contractor that provides trees and vegetative control services to residential and commercial in addition to government and utilities. The FEDAC FedEx is a corporation of utilities which bought Cars Tree Service to do the grunt labor the utilities don't want to bother with. Cars itself is not a utility nor essential. Under COVID-19 Minnesota stay at home, they may have fallen into the essential services to continue working, but that does not mean they are an essential utility. Fourth point, land and water contamination. Plants and tree disease, plant and tree disease on vegetative product being introduced to the property that is dumped slash stored at location that was not on site prior, such as emerald ash borer, oak wilt, Dutch elm disease, invasive plant species, etc. Fifth point, land water contamination. Chemical satur saturation or residue of pesticides and herbicides remaining on or in product being introduced to the property 
that was previously not on site prior. Most of this vegetative product will come from private properties that have utility easements, and what type of chemicals that could have been introduced is fully unknown, and cars could not guarantee that has there has never been toxins introduced. Will these unknown chemical treatments leach into the ground and groundwater making their way to well, water, wetlands, trout brooks, URRW? Next point, fire, spontaneous combustion. All the vegetative product, including processed wood chipping, poses the risk of spontaneous combustion from decaying wood and vegetation. The proposed storage slash processing sounds like, it, sounds like it will not be manned ever, let alone 24 hours a day, to keep watch for smoldering, heat decaying product, and this could put the neighborhood at risk for wildfires and definitely stress or tax our on-call fire department. The fire department, JPA, is currently in question for now then, and we as a city do not know what a fire department will look like within the next few years, but I highly doubt it will be going to a full-time department which would be needed to deal with ongoing heat flare-ups from the decaying vegetation. Noise. Excessive noise six days a week for 13 hours a day from 10 to 30 chips with big equipment coming and going all day as well as unloading, cutting, and chipping machinery during the day with the hours listed to finding a fact that cars are requested will put undue noise hardship on a mostly residential neighborhood which is pretty quiet, which is a pretty quiet horse community with the occasional seasonal farm equipment. Should the wildlife, horses, other small farm animals, and household pets be subjected to this constant noise of operating or coming and going all day? Or even the residents of this community? Many people are working from home and or homeschooling. Try doing any of that with windows closed, let alone open from all the noise this equipment on site or coming and going will create. For me personally, I work midnights and try to sleep during the day. Have any of you ever worked midnights and try to get an, any measurable amount of sleep so you can function coherently when needed with constant noise of large trucks coming and going or equipment running? The second one comes from Chad Jerzak. that a vegetation slash compost dump can negatively impact the environment and flow of the adjacent neighborhood and traffic flow. Now then, City Code Chapter 3-1-3 and 3-1-4. The description of this code states, nuisances, which are violations described in 3-1-5, such as refuse plant and tree trimmings, wood and vegetative storage, unwanted vegetation such as weeds, conditions conducive to vermin harboring, and fire hazard. By allowing this tree disposal, you are basically saying that your own city code is irrelevant. City codes are created for the protection of all residents and to set a vision for safe neighborhoods. Getting into this request undermines the very nature of having a city code. Second, having traffic concerns on 181st Street. This is used as a cut across route for a large number of residents between Anoka, Andover, Ramsey, now then, and Elk River. The amount of traffic on this road is already very significant, and the location slash planned approach of this dump would introduce a significant traffic hazard. Would Anoka County allow this? What does this extra heavy equipment traffic mean for day-to-day -day commuting and travel for the area residents? Next, land and water contamination. Many questions here. Would the chemical and residue of pesticides, herbicides remaining on or in product dumped at the product property is a concern. What does this mean for runoff into the groundwater, private well water, wetlands, etc.? What type of guarantee can be given that the plants and trees taken to the site will not have some type of negative environmental impact, such as disease and exotic species introduced? Concerns would be specifically, concerns specifically would be emerald ash borer, oak wilt, Dutch elm disease, invasive plant species, etc. Has information from the Minnesota DNR been looked at regarding issues with site dumps such as this? How far away is material being taken from and brought to this site? How do we know this will not induce, introduce invasive species to the area? Next, fire slash spontaneous combustion. A dump site of this nature poses a concern for potential fire hazard, especially if not monitored regularly. Will a plan be set in place for this site to be inspected slash maintained on a regular basis? Please review these concerns that many residents in the area may have regarding a dump site such as this. I can think of any variety of other locations that would not impact surrounding neighborhoods where a site such as this would be more, much more appropriate. 
How does this site fit into the vision for now then and the 2040 plan? What could a dump site such as this do for property values and the overall desirability of the neighborhoods of the area? Thank you for your thoughtful consideration. Thank you. Now <clears throat> we're going to let the public come up here. Uh, try not to cover this too much, what we've already read, <coughs> read out from these letters, but you, you have the opportunity now to get up and state what you think. Uh, so it's open to the public at this time. Someone would like to come up to the, uh, just give your name and your address. John Enstrom. I live at 8702 181st Avenue. Uh, I have, which is just east of this, the west of this uh, sales site here. And uh, I've lived here for 44 years. And uh, I have Veterans Lake. They do a lot of things for the handicapped and the veterans on my property. This year has been tough with the virus, so we cancel a lot of our things. But Anyhow, uh, uh, I'm uh, basically a, a Ramsey resident, but my mailbox is in Nowlin, so I consider myself part of as well. So I was at the first Nowlin uh, City Council meeting when Nowlin was formed as a community. I was one of the pioneers that came up here to a visit, so been around for a long time. But uh, I realized that you know, in 44 years, I've seen a lot of changes. Some are good, some are bad, and we have to have changes. So I'm not against the changes. I just want to see good changes. And uh, I have a conditional use permit for my property. I do um, all kinds of different events on my property. Uh, I've had Cars Tree Service has brought chips to me for the last five years. This winter we brought in, we had to take down probably uh, four or five hundred trees on my property. And they were all chipped up and disposed of on my property. We had the logs cut up there. I have wood processors, but I have a condition to use permit to handle this. This is something I'm not doing any other way. And uh, uh, anyhow, uh, before I could store wood chips on my property with my condition to use permit from Anoka County, I had to construct a one foot berm all the way around the area so there'd be no runoff into the wetlands. I don't see any, any berm put up here to stop runoff. And I think it's very important because the ditch on the west side of this property, the Army Corps of Engineers has determined that's a navigable waters, wetland, which means it's a high intense quality unit. And I think it should be protected that there's trucks parked, equipment parked, they could have hydraulic leaks, could have motor oil leaks, all kinds of things could happen. We don't need runoff going to that ditch that's going to pollute my farm downstream from it and anywhere else in the county. So as a very important ditch, I think that has to be really protected. But uh, the berm, if I had to have a berm for my wood chips and compost sites, they should certainly have to have them for theirs. So that should be brought in. Uh, the, in the first letter that we received from the city of Alvin, stated that it would be open to the public to bring in trees, chips, and then take the chips out. If you're doing this, bringing trees in, you're bringing diseases in. You have no idea where that tree came from that's on that property. I've been in forestry, I went to forestry to the University of Northern Illinois for trees. I know trees. Right now we got emerald ash where we got oak wilt, elm disease. They're all out there. Uh, we've got emerald ash where right in Ramsey. So
So who's to say that someone that's coming in with brush or trees isn't coming in from Ramsey, Hennepin County, Wright County, someplace else, and bring him into Nalda. There's no way you can control it. And like I say, we don't need any more disease coming in, whether it's emerald ash borers, uh, Dutch elm, it's all communicable diseases to our trees. And it's surrounded by trees, this property. And uh, uh, they're sacred. Like I say, I would just hate to see that get uh, wasted with people disregarding the event. But, uh, uh, and if people bring in trees, the city of Elk, Elk River has a compost disposable site on the west side out towards the hockey rinks of all fields at the end of School Street. One of the biggest problems they have is people go and they cut brush, clean their yards on the weekends. The city lot isn't open. So people bring the brush and trees in and, oh my God, the door's locked, you can't get in. But they don't come home with it. They dump the brush in the, in the road, in the ditch, in front of the place, and let the city have to clean it up. I'm afraid this place having a locked gate would have the same effect. People would be bringing in stuff. Oh, it's closed, you can't get in. There's no one at this car's tree service there. Normal business hours are only open when you get your trucks in in the morning and again at night. So the chance of someone catching someone there to bring in wood chips or to bring to get chips or to haul stuff out would be very minimal. And I think that's, uh, if they had regular store hours, they'd be there from 9 to 5 or something every day of the week or five days a week with car street service. Unless they change, they won't be working four tens. So only only four days a week, Sundays and the weekends, no one's there. So that's when trash is being piled up in the ditch. And uh, we have enough problem with people throwing couches and tires and everything else on the road. So it's, uh, uh, like I say, I've seen a lot of this through the years. And with, with this 181st Avenue, I don't know if you've read the, the papers, they're, uh, Elk River is, uh, in Sherman County, is expanding 181st Avenue. I think it's 10 to $11 million they're putting into an expansion to make that into a more of a turnoff lanes, et cetera. But that's going to greatly increase the traffic going by us and on to this property. And like I say, I think uh, we've got enough there without having trucks. And uh, anyhow, it's, uh, there was never any mention of any uh, permits from Minoka County. I did talk to Matt Look, who's a county commissioner for this district. And his knowledge is you have to have a permit for a compost site for doing chip disposal. That wasn't ever brought up here. And it's, it's quite a bit of money that they ask for because they ask for monthly reviews. They have people come out and inspect the site that it's up the, up the series. And they also spec by state specs that it has to have a certain soil type to store the product on. And uh, my farm, which is across the road from this farm, didn't meet those specs. And I don't think there's a great difference in soil from that side, the north side road, to the south side. But my farm wouldn't make the specs. And uh, uh, I don't think it will uh, on this, uh, this property as well. And uh, um, mostly to get around that, that people have had to go with a, a concrete pad, not a gravel that's impervious because they don't want contamination coming from that. And uh, uh, like I say, they, they specify it has to be over 500 feet to a resident. We, we're probably close to 500 feet or more, but it's real close because there's only a store 
chips, you give off a lot of uh, com compost. Compost is like manure. And you have a lot of odor coming out of it. And it's very uh, not appreciative to a lot of people. So I'm just, uh, like I say, my piles of chips are minimal. Would be not even the size of this room that I stockpile. And I turn mine constantly to get oxygen through them so they don't compost. But uh, uh, anyhow, uh, uh, I was concerned there was no mention if they're going to have all these trucks, are they going to be different oils and fuel depots there for storage? Uh, you know, that's. That was one thing that I had. But opening this property for truck parking facility will only lower the adjacent, adjacent property values of the area. And if this is 10 acres of a 40 acre field, what's going to happen in the other 30 acres next to it? Once you open up this 10 acres, it's going to allow the next 10 acres, the next 10 acres, the next 10 acres, to do the same low-end truck parking. Who's the next day going to come up and store asphalt trucks there, garbage trucks, or what's the next one that's going to come in there? And once you let one in, how are you going to stop the next three coming in right behind it? If this is going to be an area that was designated for high-use commercial use, that's one thing. This is farmland. It would be highly residential. It's got beautiful oak woods and uh, great scenery. A lot of people like building on a wetland. They don't have neighbors, etc. But not to store trucks. And like I say, it's strictly all the trucks are exposed. It's only a little garage, 12 by 24. It's one fourth the size of this room. There's fish houses bigger than that on the locks lake. But uh, any out uh, park trucks on this, I think, is. Uh, it's not good for it because it's only going to create a cancer and let the next 10 acres, the next 10 acres, and the next 10 acres get into something else. And I think that's wrong. But uh, this is not the place they have it. They should be on a commercial lot and pay taxes for it, not just farmland. You know, this is a cheap avenue. They're owned by uh, all these power companies, one of them is in Oak Electric, store their trucks in a, at Ramsey. They already got land down there. I mean, use, use their own land. They don't need to take our land. So, anyhow, I think that uh, commercial property should stay commercial. It shouldn't go to a farm land and try and turn it into a lowering the values of all the adjacent properties. So, I don't think there's uh, uh, any now then residents here today in this room that would want this for their neighbor as well as mine. And like I say, I, and no one wants to have this there. And I just would like to see uh, to see the now then put a kibosh on this. But let them go to a commercial property. Bring it up here to downtown now. Then. So, all right, well, thank you, folks. Thank you. Somebody else like to get up and do this. A lot of things have been covered, so don't recover this stuff. Well, my name is Steve Myers. I live on 832485, directly across from that barn, across the wetland. I wholeheartedly agree with the letter writers and the previous speaker, and I'd just like to reemphasize since in the last newsletter, Ramsey has decided not to uh, be part of our fire system anymore. We're kind of up in the air on that. And if we've got all that brush piled up over there, and that in late summer, early fall, that wetland is just ready to explode, and it's not going to take much. And that fire is going to come roaring across, going north, and it's going to take all of our houses that are on 185th. At Dead end all the way around that burn. I'd like you to consider that too in your conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Someone else like to come up and address this. Thank you. Um, my name is Sean Vanessa and I live at 8840 and I'm your 
my biggest concern um, you know, is the traffic and thinking of having all the extra trucks going by because um, there's a lot of trucks that go by and I mean, just a lot of traffic, but especially trucks. And um, the thing that always has been a concern, and we've lived, I've lived here for 23 years, um, there's no um, shoulders. No, shoulders. 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 Thank you. There's no shoulders on that road. And, you know, if I can be about half a mile before um, Armstrong and, you know, the four-way stop sign. And I'll tell you, I think about maybe I'll just ride my bike, and I feel like I'm taking my life in my hands just even to go that half mile. And so I, I really am concerned about having the noise from all the extra trucks and just the safety of it. Thank you. Thank you. Some comments this time. Okay, at this time I'm going to ask the uh, commission if they have any questions or anything they want to discuss here. I, I was over there today and, and looked at the site, and uh, I'll have to admit the roads are pretty bad. And there was a lot of traffic. I, I wanted to go down past there, turn around. I had to drive about a, well, maybe a mile and a half further before I could turn around because there's too many cars coming. So there is a lot of traffic on that road over there. Anybody else got comments? Mr. Chair? Yes. Would it be all right if I had Mr. Amundsen clarify a couple things? Sure. Um, would you respond to the, oh, there you are. <laughs> The disease question, and then you know how you handle any dumping that is done up maybe at Alex or your other sites. Sure. So in Alexandria, we don't have it open to the public. Um, it's strictly for car street service. And again, that was just a. It was kind of an afterthought that I remember living in Ramsey and not having a spot to dump. And I thought, boy, that maybe would be something that'd be nice for the city and or residents. So that's. It's really taken or leave it. I don't really care one way or another at that. I just thought that it would be something that would be nice for people to use. So I was not pushing for residents to be in there. And as I hear more and more of the traffic concerns, maybe that's not the right road to go. I, you know. And if that's the case, then I'm, I'm fine with that. I, I completely understand. Um, our company prides itself in safety. Um, safety takes every person, and it, it takes our guys every morning being cognizant of what they're doing. Driving bigger trucks is dangerous. Driving vehicles, a, a, a boy that went to my son's school got hit by a vehicle on a bicycle on a road very similar to this one with, with no shoulder. I, I can't change what the, what the road looks like, but what I can tell you is that our, our guys are very safe. Before we let them drive any vehicles, we make them go through a safety course of driving and check off and make sure that they're they can drive. Uh, the majority of our, our drivers are CDL drivers, meaning our trucks that are over 26,000 pounds. Um, you know, they can drive, which is it's not an easy feat to be a commercial driver. You can do the permit test, you got to do a driving test. Um, so, you know, I guess what was the question, Ms. Fulmer, that you had? Uh, right the other one the, was the size dumped. of the trucks, number of the trucks. Well, dumping, I mean, 181st is one of our busiest roads. It is a county road. It's considered an arterial or minor arterial, so it is intended to be one of the major roads. Um, yeah, we definitely know that 
traffic is increasing. Um, honestly, when we approve any home business or any other operation that does have trucks, that is what we want, is trucks pulling out onto a paved roadway rather than gravel or on some local road. I guess just to clarify too, it, it wouldn't be a, our vehicles would probably be going in and out of that driveway less than any of the residents that have a property on that property. If they're running to Walmart and then they're running to the kids over here, they're running to work. I mean, it, it literally would be likely from my experience at all of our other locations. We got a couple of trucks leaving in the morning. Some mornings there's not going to be any trucks there because we, we work for Connexus, like I said, they're one of our owners, and their system expands much, much further than now then. I mean, it, it goes almost all the way out to Wisconsin. If we're all working over at Wisconsin, we're not going to have vehicles parked in now then, having guys driving in now then, picking up the vehicles and driving all the way out to the, the Wisconsin border. So that's part of that, that satellite thing again. So as far as our vehicles and, and really much of an increase in traffic, yeah, there will be an increase because there's going to be more vehicles there, but there would also be an increase if there was a, a home business there or if an uh, individual resident bought that property. And I don't feel like it would be that much different um, different at all. It might be even less traffic. Well, car, uh, cars used to be just north of here, about a mile and a half. And uh, w when they were there, there was no problem, but there's a lot better road here than the, what there is over there. Because, mm -hmm. well, you know, it's a lot wider here. Yeah. And uh, I, I can see the concerns because of the road over there. Uh, but when they were up here, they didn't dump anything. Mm -hmm. all, all they had is the vehicles they parked there. Right. And that, that's kind of one of our biggest struggles, too, is where, where should we dump stuff? And that's, again, kind of... Um, portion of why we want that um, I guess in in, re, in response to compost piles, we're not looking at making compost. Compost is completely different than wood chips. Um, we're not turning it into black dirt. We're not composting it where it's going to go rancid and, and be rotten and trying to turn it and turn it into black dirt that we can resell. Um, the chips, the brush piles, it's going to be the bulk of what's there, brush piles, logs, and there will be some chips, but those chips will be hauled out periodically throughout the year when the chip mulch grinder, the big tub grinder, would come in and take care of any of the brush and log pile that was there. So it's not something that you'd have a, a, a mulch pile the size of this room that's going to be sitting there for years and years and years turning into black dirt or compost. Um, I guess in response to disease and, and insect problems, emerald ash borer, um, Anoka County has a quarantine. So anything from us, would not be coming from outside of Anoka County and dumped at that site. Uh, it's, it's state law, it's mandated. We're a reputable company, like I said, one of three that's accredited by the Tree Care Industry Association. So outside wood from other counties would not be brought in here. Uh, Oak Wilt, Oak Wilt's been here for quite some time. Like I said, I live in Ramsey, I lost a lot of trees to Oak Wilt. Um, trees that are chipped generally are not an issue for Oak Wilt. Um, but, you know, again, if you've got uh, somebody that lives in, in Ramsey, but his driveway is in now then and he's got an oak tree and dies and he cuts it down and has a brush pile, whether it's a small brush pile or a big brush pile, um, transmission of oak wilt is possible. Um, you know, oak wilt can be overland or it can be underground, so it can be spread by the uh, oak beetle that can fly over and, and infect or inoculate an oak tree, or it can be spread by underground transmission where the roots are touching one another. Um, but it's it's here. I mean, it's it's in the now then, it's in Anoka, it's in Ramsey. Emerald Dashboard, it's here. It's in Anoka County. Um, whether or not there's been a confirmed case in, in now then, I can't I can't say that, but I can tell you that it's like any invasive species. I don't know if any of you guys are fishermen at all, but thank zebra mussels. You can, you can do the best to try to maintain it. You can have somebody sitting at the, the landing saying you need to drain, drain your boats, but essentially it's, it's, it's a matter of time until invasive species. That's why it's an invasive species. So minimizing that likelihood of transmission of disease is absolutely important to us. I'm a certified arborist myself. I like taking care of trees. I want trees to live. But they also die, and we also all need power. And 
part of being a utility vegetation arborist is also seeing that there's a goal not only to save and beautify trees, but also to prune trees to ensure that they're safe, reliable electricity. Has anybody in the committee got any questions to ask? I have, a, I have a question. Why do you have to have a dump site you didn't have one up here for years? Um, well, like this gentleman said, he probably allowed us to dump a lot of chips there, which but, was great. But they, uh, didn't, they didn't dump anything up here. The, I, we didn't own a property up there. We did have a viewing condition use permit to try to get this, this property that we're looking at here. There, there was no ownership by Cars Tree Service of the property up there. It was simply a spot that was permitted to us by whoever the owner was in the city that said, yeah, you guys can park the trucks here while you're working in the area. Okay. Any other questions here? Yeah. Fire, there was a fire concern. Uh, maybe I can address that. Um, I think that there's a pretty simple fix on a fire concern. Um, firefighters have bare ground all the way around. If they're fighting a fire, they, they dig up the grasses or the fuel for the fire. So if that's something that needs to be done as a condition, and that there's a, a buffer zone of bare ground that's maintained, bare ground. So if there were a fire, we've never had a fire, unless it's a fire that we've started, which in some of our more rural areas, we have burned piles. In this case, we're not looking at that. We're looking at doing mulching and hauling it down to the city of St. Paul. So. Uh, Fires, I don't think, are as much of a concern, especially if you're not looking at spontaneous combustion. Spontaneous combustion is going to happen if you are creating compost. So if you've got a pile of wood chips that's sitting there for multiple years, that's where that heat's going to build up on the inside. That's not what we're looking at doing. We're looking at multiple times throughout the year, hauling everything off the site, and like I said, a condition of a, a buffer zone of bare ground is, is needed. By all means, I don't want anybody's house to burn down. That's not something that, that we want. Um, we, we want to make it safe. We want it to be a well-maintained property. We want to make sure that if a berm is needed, absolutely. I don't want any sort of contaminants going into um, a, a wetland. The same could be said about any tractor or farm machinery that's been working on that property, too, because they have hydraulics as well. So I, I, I'm not opposed, and I'd be more than happy to do any conditions that, that we need to do to make this property safe, um, well kept. There was some concern about uh, looking at looking at trucks that are parked there. Part of the plan, I don't know if we touched on, was to put up a protective barrier um, of trees, so creating a stand of evergreen trees, which would be green year round, uh, blocking anything from the road and any additional properties uh, along the, I believe it's the west side of, of the, the road. Um, and so, again, you know, if, if somebody doesn't want to look at it, I don't want them to have to look at it. So let's come to a solution of that. My main proposition here is to plant a, a hedgerow of trees. I personally like uh, attacking arbor varieties because they fill out and they're thick, and you can shear them and shake them and make them look how you want them to look, very well kept, and they create a great screen here. Um, Are there any trees on that property right now? There are trees along the western border, and they're they're mostly. Uh, but that's not your property or your trees that you buy. It's kind of like the property line. Yeah, it's actually about 25, 30 yards away. Yeah. yeah. So I'm the owner of that property. Okay. So yeah, over. There, in there might be a little bit down in that bottom right corner there. I guess I, I don't. I didn't have a GIS, and it's not surveyed perfectly, so. Yeah, we've never met before, but uh, the trees that are currently on there are right off the road. So there aren't any trees on that property whatsoever other than off the road. Yeah. Um, if the fire does start, you have water to the north and water to the west. And water to the east is surrounded by water. So there's not a fire issue there at all. But. And I guess the, the only other thing that like I said, this goes back to the public coming in or not coming in. Do you guys want the public to come in and you think that that's a good idea? Do you like that as, as a city that you guys wanted to say, well, as a city, I think that that makes sense for us to be able to have a spot to put stuff? Um, great. If, if it's a public issue and there's concerns about the public dropping 
brush or logs or chips on the side of the road. I think that this day and age we've got cameras that we can put up and are they perfect? No, but um, if you place cameras in the right spot, whether that be trail cameras and or 24 hour monitoring, um, you're gonna be, it's, it's aware of it. Like I said, I'm not pushing for that, I'm not pushing for it, it's just another consideration of there's usually a solution to most problems in the where it's still there. Any other questions for me? I don't see any. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're going to give the audience another chance to come up if they want, want to address anything else they like at this time. Bobby? If there's no one, we'll, we'll close the public hearing then. Public hearing is closed. Now we'll act upon it. the general feeling here on the planning of zoning. This is the participation part, Dale. Pardon me? This is the participation part. Yeah. <clears throat> I think we had great comments from the uh, community. Uh, my opinion is I don't know from a Ton of value that it adds from uh, from now then. When we have a plot of land that could be a home, it could be a four or five, six hundred thousand dollar house. Instead, we are choosing potentially to put a gravel lot on it with some brush. So, if we looked at what's going on right outside the door, there's an incredibly nice building that's being built that has some outdoor parking for equipment. It's going to have some noise. It's right in a commercial area. This area is in the middle of the rural area <clears throat> with essentially no tax value for us when it gets done and it doesn't add a lot of value and most of the residents that are sitting out here don't want it. So <clears throat> that's and I happen to live right across from where they dump um, construction debris and they grind that a couple times a year and the concerns around noise are probably valid. Any other discussion? Mr. Chairman, uh, I would tend to agree. I, I just don't think it's a very good fit for the area. It is largely, largely uh, uh, farmland right now, but at the same time, I would think this is going to be uh, uh, something that really wants to be just a a good residential area. If it was, they were looking two doors away from the commercial site here and still an RRA, that might be a better fit. Uh, just being closer to this than so much right in the middle of just strictly a uh, just totally residential area, and that the road is not very uh, conducive for uh, for that type of traffic with um, trucks as well. I, I just see that as being a a concern trying to pull it bigger trucks in and out of there as well. So. Yes. I wanted to just reiterate that yes, I believe the road is a major concern just because the size of vehicles and their trailers that they do take with them in and out all the time. And that road is very heavily trafficked. Um, yes, there is, there is concerns from all the residents and they're, they're valid concerns. So if the, if the county didn't make them put in some sort of a turnoff it would be quite uh, a nuisance to all the residents and the drivers of that road. There's no question, uh, Ms. Stockton, uh, that they'd have to have a turn lane there, wouldn't they? No. Not necessarily, no. Not necessarily? Because they're, they're not a bit, they're not, it's not they're not acting as a, as a okay. commercial. It's not a yeah, it's not a commercial. It's still residential. Yep, residential is a driveway. Well, it has more to do with the traffic generation and, you know, it's not like a street, it's a driveway. Right. Yep. <clears throat> so, I, I mean, I think it would be, and again, from a, just from trying to weigh the benefit versus the impact, there's not a ton of benefit from a, from a 
we aren't going to use it. There's enough issues with us, like we said, dumping tires and mattresses around ditches to try to control. Are we going to try to figure out how to control dumping trees at off hours of the night? And there's not a ton of revenue that you're going to gain from this thing from a tax standpoint. And it looks like it's in the middle of a, well, there's some very nice homes just to the north of this place. How far north? Uh, it looks like 1,600 feet. Which would be what, a quarter mile? Uh, yeah. yeah. On the other side of that cat tail suite. Yep. So that would be the closest residence. And then there's another one. Away. And then there's another one 315 feet to the one side and 500 feet across. And how long are these crops that are supposed to be in? I've never heard how long. They're eight feet wide and I, mean, I don't know if you have seen just a traditional bucket truck. I'd say that they're probably about 15 feet long. So if we can leave the castle and the right turn. So John, no, no bigger than any of your large equipment that you have on your farm? Pardon me? Those trucks would be no larger than the equipment that you have on your farm? No, it's not that. I'm uh, legally able to do that. We have, that's why we have a condition to use permit. So why couldn't uh, that happen here? Well, what I'm saying is by opening up this, we're going to end up the city of Alvin being a, a low end dump site because the next 10 acres, the next 10 acres, the next 10 acres, one's going to be garbage trucks, the next going to be tree trucks. Who knows what's going to be black toppers, who's going to be in there? And like I said, it's it's not going to help the community. It's not going to be. It's going to be an eyesore. Now the city controls that, though, right? Who gets the well, if the city controls it, if they open this up, they're not controlling it. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes. Remember, your job is to consider to consider whether this is an essential service and part of the utility operation. You could just as easily have a request here to go on the same site for a cell tower. A power company, uh, you know, there's a lot of other utilities that, that could ask to locate in the same spot. I mean, visually, I don't think this is as negative as some could be, but obviously there are other issues that concerns. I don't want to negate those, but anyway. Mr. Chairman, Joni Greenwald, uh, 47th um, just a comment, we're learning today, so there's some of this information as well, we didn't know some of the plans that they had, but if you're putting up arborvitae trees that are getting very tall and surrounding it so that it's not an eyesore, they also block sound, and since this is only something that will be running a couple times a year, the sound from that will be far less than the tractors that are currently on the property. And currently, you said there's a lot of traffic on that road? You guys know how much vehicle traffic is on that road in a 24 hour cycle? Well, the, what would they had a count on that? It was more than going by here. Right. From my understanding, it's 8,000 vehicles in a 24 hour cycle. I thought it was 7,000. So if people are talking about noise, we got plenty of noise, guys. We got trackers, semi trucks, police vehicles, emergency vehicles, all kinds. So there's all kinds of noise. But that doesn't mean we should add more. That doesn't mean no twice a year. Let's, let's, let's get back. Let's get back some order. That doesn't it, make sense. It's not us here. It, it, we're going to have to make a decision on this. Uh, uh, I don't know if there's any more comments. We're going to have to make a decision on this. Uh, I don't know if there's any more comments made about this. And this is so we're, piece, we're through with you guys. This is a piece of the southern part of the world. That's not. Uh, we got to make, make a motion to either vote this up or down. I, I know there's a, we're really concerned about the uh, traffic over there. That's one of the big issues. And also being a dump. Uh, personally, I'd like to see it in a, com in, in a commercial. Well, I don't know if I'd even want to see it in a commercial area, but it's, I, I think it'd be better fit for the commercial, commercial area. And, uh, but if somebody wants to make a motion, We'll make a motion to vote this up or down. I'll make a motion to deny the commissioner use permit. Do commissioner uh, Alders. 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 He, he made a motion. Did somebody second this motion? I'll second the motion. Is there any further discussion? Dale, Mr. Yes. Chair, 
We need to state reasons why. So please share again your specific reasons why you're denying. Okay. The, one of the big reasons why is we're, we're concerned about... I'll just make a motion. Pardon me? I'll just make a motion. Okay, you made a motion. Go ahead. So there's been legitimate concerns on the road and the traffic. There's concerns with the um, noise in the area. There's concerns with, is it the right fit for the piece of land that it is in the adjacent 30 acres? And there's concerns that when we bring this in, it doesn't add a ton of value to now then from a tax standpoint. So we're going to be left with a gravel lot with a small building on it versus a home. You know, I think we're also concerned about stuff leaching into the groundwater, too. There's a few important. Oh, okay, pollution. So, Chris, can I just point yes. a clarification? Yes, Mayor. For Commissioner Alders. Um, and again, the reason I'm not going to ask for that, any denial needs to have specific uh, reasons on record. Um, the planner did offer two proposals here to the Commission one for approval, one for denial. I would just ask as you reconsider that, you take a look on, on page two of the denial uh, recommendation from the plan and see if that's consistent with what you just said. I'll go ahead and read that, Mr. Chair, if that's okay. Go ahead. The proposed use is inconsistent with the city's 2040 land use plan and the policies and provisions as cars, tree service, is a land use with commercial industrial characteristics and basically a contractor yard not appropriate in a residential area. The proposed use would be more appropriate within an industrial area and does not meet the minimum size requirement for commercial industrial buildings, which is 2,000 square feet. The proposed use is a company which is owned by a conglomerate of utility companies and provides services to electric cooperatives, but is not considered an essential service in and of itself. That would be for you to determine. The proposed outdoor storage and noise to be generated is not compatible with adjacent residential uses. And to that I would add the traffic concerns and just generally, well, I've got the comp compatibility with adjacent uses. I would add the traffic and then the value concern. You accept that along with the motion? I do. Okay, all right. So second, I accept it. Any further discussion? Seeing none, that's the end of the discussion on it. So this, that's the final decision. This will be going to the planning or the city council. Oh, have to, okay, okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. What do you say? I know. I'm not going to hold on. Okay. Uh, I think we, we missed quite a bit of stuff here. But basically, the road is is the biggest thing, and the problem is is the DOT because number one, there shouldn't be the trucks that we have on that road. We're trying to go around the scale to do it. Uh, oh. There's way, way too much traffic. All right, let's go. Everybody's okay. trying to get around okay. because it's been... At this point, you're just not moving. Now, uh, we'll, we'll go on. We voted on it. So it, it will be going to the city council meeting the second Tuesday of next month. First, the second Monday. Oh, it's... Yeah. Second Monday? Okay. The 10th. 10th. Oh, well, the 10th. So it goes to them. They, they make the final decision on it. Okay, we're, what we're going to do now is open the next public hearing. Next public hearing. Yeah. Mr. Yes. Chair, sorry, just let these people get out unless okay. they would like to stay and listen, but there'll be a lot of noise for a minute here. Thank you for coming, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm trying to see if my applicant is here. Oh, Mark, is that you back there? Yeah. Oh, good, okay. okay. Come on up front. This is Mark Bayer, everybody. Okay. Go ahead. We're going to open this public hearing for a conditional use permit for a home extended business located at 
60240 Viking Boulevard, PAD 23-33-25-31-008. Mark Beyer wishes to make peppy, pepper jelly and other food products from a garden products. The request includes construction of a kitchen within an existing 30 by 50 accessory building and use of a second secondary building as a gathering area for two events per year. So we're going to at this time, uh, we're going to have the, uh, our, uh, this stock in our planner make a description of what she found. Sure, I'll give a brief overview. Um, Mr. Bear has an existing accessory building. He'd like to construct a kitchen and to make pepper jellies and other food products and have two events per year, which are like tasting events and just sort of introducing his products to his friends and family. The property is on Old Viking Boulevard, uh, not far off of Cleary Road. This is, shows a proposed site plan for the property. It's a five acre parcel. The existing house is up front near the road. The, the larger of the two accessory buildings is the one within which he's proposing the kitchen, kind of on this back end. And there'd be a, a new septic system or some way to handle the wastewater out of the kitchen there. And then the smaller of the two accessory buildings is proposed as sort of a little, um, you know, where the tasting and the little party, if you will, would, would occur. Um, he's showing a driveway and parking area kind of between the two buildings. Uh, there is a wetland on the east portion of this site, and then there's kind of a drainage ditch that w runs diagonally here. And eventually he'd like to get permission to cross this wetland with a driveway and then build a new home in the, the rear part of the property and then potentially have some additional gardens along either side back here. Uh, the gardens could, you know, really go in now if he wanted to and then the driveway could come later. Um, so he um, had asked the question about could the existing house be used as an office or something later if the kitchen were removed from that and when the new house is built. And I told him that would be considered at a later date based on the number of accessory buildings allowed and you know we talk work with the building official on that. But that's really not in the cards right now. We're approving or hoping to approve the uh, proposal with the kitchen and there are quite a few conditions that I've shown. Well, let me finish going through my photos here. Here's a sketch of the kitchen, which is the on the back end of the, the south end of that larger building. Basically, basically, the whole 16 by 35 would be like a big cooler within which there would be countertops and, you know, a sink and regular commercial kitchen. And, and then the other two walls would be storage shelves for all the product. He'd like to have a drain if possible, and then the doors that would go into the remainder of the building. Um, again, I've shown this property and the distance from the pole barn to the adjacent homes. And the closest home is the land to his west. There's a large pole barn kind of on the rear of the property, and the home is up here centered. So we're looking at about 272, 265 feet or so to the, to the west. And then um, I think really the only time that noise is going to be a factor on this site is, is during the two events. So we have proposed, you know, and I need to discuss certain hours of operation and when those events might occur. Um, we're talking about a limit on the number of people and the number of vehicles. So there are a lot of things to think about and we can go through those conditions specifically again. Um, there's some photos here of the two buildings. The top picture is the smaller of the two 
and the lower one is the larger of the two buildings. This is a view to the west toward that neighbor's home. This is the smaller building here looking across toward the neighbor's home. And this is kind of to the southwest to the neighbor's um, pole barn. I was standing sort of in the middle of uh, Mr. Bayer's property. This is the existing garden on uh, adjacent to the large pole barn. He's got pepper plants growing in there. And this is a view from the large, or toward the large pole barn uh, from the street. And this is standing by the large pole barn looking back at Old Viking Boulevard and the house being off in the left side here. So um, I think it's a reasonable home business for the residential property. Um, I think if we add appropriate conditions to this use, um, it should be able to coexist fairly well with the uh, residents in the neighborhood. So with that, we can open up to some Oh, one thing I did recommend is some screening along that west side where to buffer that closest neighbor. On the other side, we have a wetland and um, a small a portion of existing vegetation here. So we can talk about types of screening. Uh, Mr. Bear would like to put a fence up by the road and a small sign eventually. And, oh, one thing I noted in the report when I reread today was I had a discrepancy in there regarding sign size. Um, under our interim use permit section, we allow up to six square feet of a sign, but in our sign ordinance, we refer to um, 12 square feet in a RRA district. So there's a little bit of discrepancy there, but you, typically take the more restrictive of the two, which would be the two by three or a six square foot sign. Okay. So thanks. You, Mr. Mayor, do you have any yeah. comments you might make? I'm Mark Bear, I live at 624. No. You got any comments you would like to make about this? Do I have any problems about No, co comments. Comments. Oh, yeah, I'd just like to start a business. I don't know. Do okay, okay, please just we have to give you an opportunity to if you want to say anything to say it. Well, I just think you know, I mean, it's always been a passion of mine. I've been in the carpet business forever and looking for something to retire on. And I was thinking I'd start a uh, pepper jelly business because uh, my mom had died here about four or five years ago and used to do it. And I was just trying to hold on on the tradition and uh, one of my passion. Okay, thank you. Have you uh, have you read all the conditions for approval, and do you have any issues with any of those? Okay, I'm going to ask. No, I'm, we'll go on. We'll go on with the right. uh, I'm going to ask the clerk if she has sent all the all legal publications and mailings. Have they been completed? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, is there any here, anybody from here from the public that wants to address this thing? Yes, come up and give your name and... If you don't want to, I'm on crutch. Can I just sit here? Is that okay? I'm Amy Winnicky, 6177 Viking Boulevard. We're in the lower left, that L-shaped property, right? We're basically on the southeast corner, southwest corner of this property. Uh, you already answered the first two questions, noise and traffic. I have no problem with that. Um, the drainage, I can't remember what you said. You said there was going to be a new septic tank? Oh, but... Or is there going to be anything draining? Because I own I a big, big, big part of that swamp back there. That's my only question. Is there going to be anything draining into the swamp, or is it all sanitary? That, what we've shown on here behind the building is strictly either septic or a tank. Yes. Okay. For, for the wastewater out, coming out of the kitchen, and if there's ever a bathroom, yeah. Okay. So, impervious surface-wise, yeah, I don't see any issues with it. And if, if you're under an acre total impervious, 
state law says you know you don't need ponding or anything so anyway but if you have yeah anything you're concerned about we would like to hear it no, that was it. Like, I, I, I thought you said something. Thank you. I'm just worried. Just the drain. Like I said, I don't want to make you part of that swamp back there. Um, okay. But if it's, it's going to be like that, that's, I have no problem with that. Okay. And, you know, if you were to build this new home back there, it is a requirement that there can be no runoff on the neighboring property. Perfect. So he would have to create some sort of a swale that directed everything toward the wetland. Okay. Yeah, because the county ditch runs literally right through the middle of my property okay. in the six one uh, seven, or, uh, six seven. So you're down here. Yeah, I'm on the L shaped property down we'll go over just move it to the right. Or to the left of me on the bottom of the screen. Oh right here. Right okay. That's me, yes. Okay. I'm the guy with all the Halloween and Christmas lights. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, got it. Yep. Thank you. That was, that was my only question. Okay, so this is a ditch here, you're saying, too? Up it, actually, yeah, right, right where the L makes, it goes right across the L right there. Oh, okay. Uh, east and west. Oh, this way. Okay. That way, yeah, right across the L there into my neighbors. That part is basically the, the uh, dividing point between 6177 and 6167 is a ditch. But I own, that, I own that whole swamp back there, so. Oh, okay. Right there, yeah. Yep, back here. Yeah, that, I own that whole acre, or that whole couple acres of swamp back there, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, is there anybody else that is here to address this uh, property change? If not, I will go. Uh, is there any questions here in the uh, discussion or questions from planning and zoning? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, is your intent to put in a, a septic system for this? Yeah, you know, whatever it takes to, for me to can uh, basically it's just going to be water and, and cuttings up from the from the vegetables. But we're thinking of maybe uh, putting in a uh, a bathroom. But but I also have a septic tank that runs up. But I don't know if I can pump it from here to, up to my other septic right. up in front of the house. Yeah. So that's what we were kind of concerned yeah. about. That's why I'm wondering. I, I was curious. I have a home based business as well, and we our our building has a. A bathroom in it, so yeah, we put in a separate, separate uh, system, and basically for the drain line, it only took one, just okay. because of, because of its uh, limited use. So, um, but uh, so I just wanted to clarify that, that I guess is, um, so I saw something in here about a portable toilet, and I guess that was more. I didn't concern. know. I just threw that out there so that we would address it and discuss it. I didn't know if he would want a portable toilet when he had these gatherings or not. And, or if you were just going to let folks in your home. Yeah, we weren't, yeah. Yeah, we didn't know if we were going to use the house as affordable or put one in there, if it's convenient, if it's not too expensive, I would like to put one in there, but we'll see. Yeah. What, what's, I can understand those for an event, but, uh, but yeah, the permanent thing by the building thing, I guess I wouldn't want to see affordable. What's, no, no. Okay. Yep. Would you yep. discuss something about the, these gatherings, what, what, what's involved there? Are they sample te testers or what are the gatherings for? I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're saying. What, what, what are the two gatherings for? The gatherings. He wants you to explain how the gatherings would go. Oh, the gatherings would just be people get together and, and tasting pepper jelly and stuff. Oh, okay. Not pretty harmless. Well, I don't know, it would be too hot for me. <laughs> yeah, trying to sell my product and have people gather, you know. And you you got plenty of room there for parking and everything. Yeah. 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 Okay. Are there any other questions that we have here? Not I'll ask the audience again if there's anybody wants has any discussion for this. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing then. No act on it. So Mr. Chair, the the sign discrepancy I was talking about. Number seven should be striped, stricken, I guess. Um, that was referencing 12 square feet. I referenced the other sign, 14, number 14. Thank you. So we are limiting the gatherings to two per year, 50 people, 25 vehicles. 
no later than 10 p.m., including any music or entertainment. So then I would like... So, so this just on that point, Mr. Chair. Yes, oh, okay. ma'am. You, you want to be specific, because we've had this issue kind of grow. Is if you have 50 people there for a gathering, and you have music and entertainment, this is where these things kind of grow, if you've got the interviews use permit. So one of the things we've struggled with in the past in the township is failure to be specific on that. And 50 people is... is one defined thing. When you start saying music and entertainment, it starts to morph. It's going to be very clear what you are allowing and what you aren't allowing because what happens is somebody says, hey, this is great. We should also do this. And so we don't really have good regulation on how many gatherings we've had or if it starts morphing into an entertainment venue or a wedding venue or some other thing. Because um, as it's just retirement because it's you, but other people found when they got successful, a lot of people wanted to come out and do that, and we ended up in Austin. So, a big part of it was because the town board wasn't specific when it came to conditions. You want to be specific, and you want to obviously abide by it, um, because violation of that cost you the know, use permit. But that's, you know, when you just, it's kind of a, including music and entertainment. If this is a tasting, are you planning on music and entertainment? Or just having music when you're having yeah, I would friends probably and potential have customers over. Yeah, I would probably have some music there. Is this, you know, again, live music or it would be live music. Okay. So those those should be specified as well. You didn't have a live band. Is that included in the fifty people? Is that included in the um yeah, it could be included. With the live band too. So live band would need to end by 10 p.m. Um, you want to limit the amount of time they're playing, or we've specified noon to 10 p.m. for this event within that window. You know, I don't know that he would necessarily have the open house for 10 hours. Uh, but that is something we should talk about, you know. Um, so, do you have any thoughts on how long? Are you just talking, you know, how long you might get a band for? Isn't it typically three, four hours? You pay for by the hour, I suppose. <clears throat> yeah, I... Not even there yet. I'll have a kitchen building up, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really hard for me to say something because I, I'm really just kind of hand tied here. And... You're still yeah, so, brain so, Mr. Bear, the, the thing we try and do at these, um, because you want to envision what this might be, and you're not there with the kitchen yet and everything. What you don't want to do is say, "Gosh, I really wanted to do this, but I kind of locked myself in to something I, I wasn't dreaming big enough." Mm -hmm. So this is really the time to say. Give us the worst any of your neighbors are going to see and get that approved now so that as you do get your kitchen and get things going, you don't box yourself in. On the other hand, if you get too big, your neighbors are going to say, gosh, that's a lot more than I bargained for. So you want to be as realistic as you can, even though you haven't started the business yet. No, I understand that, and I appreciate that. Um, I'm 59 years old. I'm not going to get that crazy. <laughs> 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 Do the free time, but I don't want to blow it out of pocket. <laughs> but I do want to have, I do want to have, you know, to celebrate whatever I'm doing. That would be awesome. But let's just say I'm 59 years old. So. Yeah, you're too crazy. I have grandkids, so mm -hmm. yeah. I just needed the options. Well, why don't you state what you want? Could there be 50 people from 10 to 1, 50 people from 1 to 3, 1 to 5 people leave, 5 people can come in? This is my part. You know, how, how detailed do you really want it? Because that's all they the, the idea is... Ten people come in, ten people go out. So right. it could be 50 people. The, the assumption is you're never going to have more than 50 people at a time. Right. Whatever that, it's not going to be the same 50 people from noon to 10. Right. But we just don't want Woodstock. Right. <laughs> 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 I understand it. 
but but you know with the conditional use, we just want to have something that's that's identifiable, and and so that as some if somebody were to complain, that's that's within the guidelines that the, that the permit allows. So we're just trying to say, you know, what what does that look like? You know, just two events a year. Well, you can see in the picture what it looks two like. Events. It doesn't look like much. Two, two, two events. Two events. Yeah. Okay. So that's. Two events a year, 50 people max, noon to 10 p.m. Is that the right hours from a business standpoint? From what time? Noon, noon to 10 p.m. Noon to 10. You go over that? Noon to 10. Yeah, you go over that? Fine. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, screening along that western line or something. Well, I think we talked about plants and events, possibly. What are you thinking? Well, if we ended up building a house up there on the top of that hill, I would probably put it more of a solid structure, probably, if that's if I could. I'm thinking right now it's most important to have some sort of a screen between the small building where your gathering will be. Okay. And then your the ones that Carr was recommending, Techni. Yeah, the Techni varieties are actually very nice trees. Um, you know, they're not going to be a huge Relatively inexpensive. Well, I think evergreens are a little more than you know deciduous type shrubs, but for a good reason because they don't drop their needles, and that's obviously what we want. So I guess we would just need to decide, you know, how long of a screen you want here. So maybe, I think that guy's water runs down into our yard there. I was just going to say. So I don't know. <laughs> You can put there really. Right, we don't want them to get them down there because they, yeah. they won't live yeah. in that ditch. So we probably would just go up to the ditch. So, yeah, what golf from? Probably. Uh, I keep going, I keep going with the red come towards down the page. Oh, down the page, yeah, down the page, yeah right about there where the water ends up. Oh. And then right in the drainage is the guy that owned the place before me had a, a, some kind of a drainage pipe. And that doesn't, it either has to come up higher or it has to be bigger or something. Because it, it floods out right there in a major ring. That swamp there on, on his property floods mine out. Here? Oh. Yeah. Where's, so, the, where's the pipe? Is it here? The pipe would be real close. Yeah, he, it doesn't show it, but he put a road in right there next to that little red house of mine. Uh -huh. And then he put a culvert that runs through right there. Oh, here. He comes in. Right there. Oh, right in here. Yes. Yep, right there. Okay. So that whole area there floods out between the little red pole barn, the little pole barn, and the and the uh, the big one. In here. And then it goes right behind it where you're talking about the septic area there. It ends up right in there, comes out of a pipe right there, and ends up in that swamp right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. As far as I understand, I've seen the water come out of that big top. So, I, if we put some hard varieties from the back corner of this little shed to up to the, mm -hmm. up to the um, yep. point where it gets wet, yep. would that be all right? Well, there's trees right there now that is hit. Do I have to add right next to him? Oh, I see. He's got trees along the lot line. Yeah, he's got trees on the lot line. There's, uh, that's his property already. Did you talk to him at all? No. no, he hasn't said anything. No. So there's 
there's a one, two, three, there's four trees already there from the little red house towards the drainage ditch right now that, that are there and existing. And then there's one tree on the opposite side of the drainage ditch there. And then from that spot towards the back of the lot, there's nothing. Oh, this is open. Yes, correct. So you're about there, yep. Yeah? You take a look, you've got two photographs there that show what he's Mark's talking about. Well, that's, that's Say that again? If you flip forward into your files there, you've got the photos from the... Oh, okay. It should be so the next one. Yeah. Oh, looking that way. Oh. Yeah, so if you look towards that's the house and that's the pole barn, there's... Here's the tree. Okay. Yep, there's, there's the tree. wet area. Okay. That's all in that row there. See the one, two, three, four right above the little shed? Yeah. The four trees. Yeah. And then it stops right where that big clump of grass is right there after the rain comes through. Yeah. Like the low area there, that little clump of bushes. Yeah. And then there's this one tree, and then the two other trees come back this way towards the big pole line. So it's like an L tree. Yep. So what do you think for you? I mean, do you want any additional trees in or not? Then. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Just that. So, so this picture is kind of taking from where your parking area is kind of shown? Yeah, so we're standing, yeah, kind of in the parking area right between okay. the two buildings looking toward the west. Okay. All right. yeah. So you would be kind of looking directly towards that neighbor's house and just thought of this other photo. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The house is cut off that picture. So there is that. The house is here and the yeah. pole barn is here. Yeah. So the small building's up here, so you know it's kind of southwesterly of this right. gathering. Well, you've got that original one, there's the first one. The one just before the, the map there. You know. Yeah, so, so that see, can you see that big pole barn there to the right? Yeah. And then you got the one to the left. Yeah, that right there where she's got that red dot would be the parking area there. You're right in that spot right yeah. there. That's the flat spot I got right there. Because then I'm just coming down here, and you're going to end up right in front of that where that drainage comes through. Mm -hmm. So that area right in there, yep. Would be so the that's the view you have from the picture that looks back at their house. Yeah, so I was standing, yeah, right about in the middle yep. here. Okay, we're about to make our, you can make a motion here, what, what we got. And would you read back to us what you've got for... Well, we need to know if you want screening or not. Has what? Screening. Oh, screening, okay. Screening in addition to the trees that the neighbor has, or do you want to just leave it? Do you want to say a fence, since the trees are already there? Nothing. 
what kind of fence is he putting in? What do you think in a lot of road for a fence? Well, it's like a, 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 probably a steel one. You know, the, oh, like just, yeah. Yeah, Vertical. I don't know. I don't know what you call it. Metal oh, steel, oh, rod okay. iron. Mm -hmm. Okay. Into the front, dress it up a little bit. Maybe with a power gate in the front. <laughs> okay, guys, your killer's not trees along the side. I'm gonna I'm gonna go and shot in the dark with I don't think there's a desire for more trees just because the land is is not gonna allow for the growth of them too nicely because of the wet lands. But um, fencing, you know, in an area would probably be all right. Now, determining where to put that fencing, don't know. Um, you're gonna have fencing if you have a trash receptacles anyways, so you kinda gotta roll with it where it needs to be for privacy. Which means a kind of open butt. Should we just say privacy fencing or plants or hedges? Yeah, because privacy fencing would be nice then. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Uh, would it be possible, like, with just that you have extended parking from south of your building, how about just straight south of the building? Could you add just a couple of things there? Just to help screen the parking, Which I guess, when you have people? The south of the... Right in here. Small, south of the tasting building in there. Well, that's right. Well, it's kind of, yeah. Towards the parking lot side, I guess, where you're... Yeah, that, 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 yeah, that inside area right there. That, that would be all parking, probably a driveway coming out of that lower one and coming up to the upper top, because okay. that one's lower than this one up here. Okay. That area would be kind of like all, okay. kind of like parking area right. there. All right. Does the building stay dry? What's that? Does the small shed stay dry? Uh... I've done some excavating around there. I'm hopefully going to stay dry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. My, my only concern is just that, like you say, you can see the, through the one picture, you can see the neighbor's house right there. But, but uh, I guess at least you're looking at his garage and not his backyard or something like that, where it might be right. bother him a little more. But he's quite a ways away. So that should probably be fine if he hasn't shared any concern already. Okay. Yeah, and we're limiting it to twice a year. Right. So graduation party, so there you go. And it'll only be a couple times a year, too. Okay, uh, if you got everything we got down there, Liz? It, it, we mentioned something about the live music and also the t taste testing, 50 people. So we'll just put, yeah, live band working within the designated hours. Noon to 10 p.m. Uh, if there's portable, we're, we'll say portable toilets only during the events, so we can't just have them sitting out there all year. Does that right. sound right? Okay. Yep. And let's see. Every the last page four and five are just general statements. You know, the trash is in the building and has to be screened back then. So and we're striking number seven or number fourteen, Liz? Seven. Number seven, okay, got it. Uh, Liz, to clarify, where is the <clears throat> Can you say it again what the difference is between a seven, the six foot and the twelve foot? Um, the twelve foot allowance is indicated in the sign ordinance for signs in the residential RRA district. This is RRA, isn't it? It is RRA, but okay. then in our inter use permit section we further limit that size down to six square feet. Which okay. would be what, a two by three? Yeah. So, yeah. 
Why don't we change it to 12? I don't know why it wasn't changed in both places. I thought of that. You think we went up to 12? I thought it was. 3 by 4 versus 2 by 3? I thought that we had changed basically to allow up to 12 foot. I didn't know there was a difference between the two. Yeah, I think it should be. I mean, an IUP is the same thing as any other home based business. I mean, that's all we allow now is IUPs. Right. I mean, I'm trying to think of another reason you'd have a sign in a, you know, residential area. Right. You would allow like a three by four, you know, political sign or something. Yeah. But yeah. It's yeah. Liz, can you check the history on that? Because if we did up it, we should have caught it in two places. Yeah, I, I really think that that's the case. It's just a typo. It should be twelve. Well, how long ago was it? It must have been quite a while. That was that was a good ten years ago. Yep. I'll try to get some info, but yeah, I agree. They should be the same in both sections. All right, I think it looks good to me. If you guys are all right with it. I have a question, one question. Um, Mr. Bear, when do you think you'll actually put this into use? Are you producing well, anything right now? Okay, because one of the conditions, if you don't do anything within a year, this nullifies this. So. So you need to have some activity and at least once a year have you're producing or something to you don't have to have events all the time, but you just have to be doing your business to keep this active. So if you go dormant for a year then this goes away. So. Okay, we don't want any surprises. What's that? We we don't like surprises. Okay. My brother, he's an exotic pepper grower in St. Paul. So. Looks like we're set for a motion then with all the recommendations we made here, with Liz's recommendations, and the things that we added here. Uh, would somebody like to make this motion? I'll make a motion. Commissioner Farrell, made the motion. Somebody? I'll make a motion to strike number seven and put into effect number 14 okay. um, with the changes of live music, some privacy fencing, and portable toilets during events only. Um, to approve this, I'll second it. Okay, Commissioner. Just, just one clarification on that, Kelly. That if Liz finds that the, we did move it up, we'd want to keep seven and strike 14. I believe we still want to probably put 14 and seven together then, because we would want some sort of approval from the city. Yeah, so we just have to get that clarified, but that being understood okay. whichever is the more generous in this case whichever the city decides what it's supposed to be would apply we just okay we we have a motion and a second uh, any further discussion oh, yeah, we second it. yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll, i'll call for the vote all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed motion carried Good luck, have fun. So, okay. Plans or anything you need to get going? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we'll open our, our, next, our next public hearing. Uh, Zoning map amendment to be considered with 20,014 comprehensive land use plan. Do you want to tell us what you have there, Liz? So we're just changing our zoning map to be consistent with our adopted land use plan, our new zoning map. Okay. So we're going to change the zoning map from the city zoning map to be Yellow settlement area, which is our two acre lot size for the building, and we have our 
commercial slash industrial, you know, just business in general. And then, but here on the zoning, we separate that into red commercial and blue industrial. And then the RRA is our two and a half acre minimum, whereas the yellow will be our two acre minimum per the settlement agreement. And we're almost ready to present a draft of that to you. We're kind of on our last revision. <clears throat> so, um, I did include this old map too, so in case anybody wanted to see it, but that's our existing zone. And just, just to clarify, Liz, it's two and a half minimum on a five acre average. Correct, correct. Yeah. But the other one is. Except for that area. Except for the yellow is two, two acre minimum two acre average. Right. The rest of it, there can be confusion. It's in a five acre average, it could be as little as two and a half. The minimum is two and a half. It still has to average five for the, for the site. For the development, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. The commercial area looks like what we discussed, Liz. I mean, it's in line with what we've discussed in the past, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, good. That's all there is to it then? With That's all there is to it. Just make a motion to okay. adopt the zoning map. Okay. Somebody like to make this motion, dude? Yeah. <laughs> I'll make the motion. I'm to, not making that motion. I'll make the motion to adopt the uh, 2014 uh, land use plan map. Okay, Commissioner Alders made the motion. Did somebody second it? Second. Commissioner Pearl uh, seconded. Any further discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Is this, you're saying that zoning for the yellow is still being... So we've established, we know the boundaries that it has to be based on the settlement agreement and we're drafting a new zoning district. It's okay. a separate zoning district and we're calling it RRT, Rural Residential Transition. And, um, you know, not a ton of difference uh, between the two. But we'll present that possibly next month. And remember, we all we have that special meeting a week from tonight. Uh, right. Or the Brian's been, um, or no, Monday, right? Monday. Monday. I'm confused. We haven't done all this yet, and we're trying to make a motion to change this for the... I guess I don't understand why we're changing the map before we've yeah. reviewed the ordinance for the yellow. Well, just because we can. I mean, we'll, no, nobody's going to move forward with this anyway right now. We were expecting something sooner, but it hasn't come, so... But it, uh... These are all the changes that we discussed of almost a year ago. Right. But just putting it, she's just put it on that for us. To see. Do, does it have to come back to us again when they, when you make these other changes? No, no, we're not changing the map again. We're changing the text. or adding text. So you're just approving the map tonight? Just the map. Okay. There's no change in the zoning regulations on the existing zones, but with this new yellow zone, there we're will be textual that. changes to that. The map will stay the same. This will all stay the same. But because it's a new zoning area, you have to approve that or recommend approval for that. Okay, I understand. I understand. This, this will all stay the same. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll, I'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Next note, we only need one more motion. Aaron. Mary, you going to adjourn to me? <laughs> the motion to adjourn. Thank you. Harold second. Harold second. Harold second. All in favor say aye. Aye.